Hello everybody and welcome to another edition of the Human Physiology video tutorials with me, Dr. Amir Sandhu. Now today we're going to talk about an aspect of our muscles which is involved in detecting uh, stretch and also the tension that the muscle develops and then influencing the nerve signals which are going to our muscles to cause a particular movement. Now the two structures which are important in regulating what I've just described are the muscle spindle and the Golgi tendon organ. So I'll talk briefly about uh, what these two structures are and what they do uh, and then we'll talk or we'll discuss the role of these two structures in proprioception. So our conscious understanding of our limb movement, uh, our position in space uh, and the sensations and feelings that we get when performing a particular uh, sporting movement. Right, so if we move on uh, first to the, the muscle spindles, now the best way to describe the muscle spindles is to actually draw them first. So essentially, if we take our skeletal muscle fibres, okay, so we're going to have, these are the individual myofibrils, which make up our skeletal muscle fibres. Let's imagine that this is uh, the biceps muscle. Okay, now you can see that I've left the, the centre of the muscle uh, empty for the moment. I'll explain to you in a moment why. Now, what we can see first is ex the extrafusal fibres. Okay, so these are known as extrafusal fibres. Now, these fibres are, are normal muscle fibres that cause a contraction, so they contain actin and myosin, and we get the crossbridge formation, and we get shortening of the muscle. Okay, so these are extrafusal fibres, and these are extrafusal fibres as well. Now, in the middle, what we've actually got is a special type of muscle fibre, which is called an intrafusal muscle fibre. Okay, now... This refers to the intrafusal muscle fibres. Now these intrafusal muscle fibres do not contain actin and myosin. Okay, they do not contain actin and myosin, they don't contract, at least not the main body. So the main body of the intrafusal fibres do not contract, um, but they're involved in detecting the stretch. Okay, so essentially what muscle spindles do is detect stretch, okay? Detect stretch and therefore joint position as well because, or limb position as well, because stretch is related to uh, the joint angle and the joint position. Okay, so going back to the intrafusal muscle fibers, they don't contain actin and myosin, but they are wrapped with nerve fibers, okay? So if I just go kind of like this. Okay, these are innervated by um, uh, nerves, okay, which are, su which are supplying an electrical stimulus to, um, or sorry, not supplying an electrical stimulus, which are se sensing uh, the stretch within, within that uh, intrafusal fibre. Now, generally, when we have uh, a lengthening of the muscles, if I was to lengthen my arm, we'd feel a stretch across the bicep. And that stretch is going to be detected by the intrafusal fibres, the muscle spindle, and it's going to send a signal to the spinal cord, okay? Now, in the spinal cord, we have what are known as interneurons, okay? So, if I put down here, for the time being, interneurons, now, interneurons basically connect an afferent sensory signal to an efferent uh, signal. Okay, so an efferent is almost like a sensor, so it's the, the nerve is sensing uh, a change in the length of that fibre. It's then sending a signal to, via the interneuron in the spinal cord to uh, an efferent uh, nerve, and in this case, an efferent nerve would be the alpha motor neuron, okay? So every single skeletal muscle fibre is innervated by uh, an alpha motor neuron. So if we have just, um, let's say for example, we've got the kind of dendrites, uh, this is the uh, axon, and we've got the nodes of Ranvier, okay? So this is just a, um, 
uh, atypical nerve cell, which is like innervating the skeletal muscle fiber. Now, what would actually happen is if we were to actually uh, stretch the muscle, then it would be sensed by the uh, afferent nerve, sends a signal via the interneuron to connect to the efferent nerve, and we'll get a signal coming through uh, the alpha motor neuron. So if I just draw that here, alpha motor neuron, and that would cause a contraction of the muscle. So it would, it would prevent the muscle from stretching, so we'd then get a, a contraction. Okay, now what, one thing that I haven't actually mentioned is that the ends of these intrafusal fibres, okay, do contain actin and myosin. So, whilst the main body, okay, this part does not contain actin and myosin, the ends of the muscle spindles, the intrafusal fibres, do contain actin and myosin. Now, what we can actually have is uh, gamma motor neurons, which can actually stimulate these uh, the ends of the intrafusal fibres to, to stretch. This is known as pre-stretch. And what that will do is it will send a signal back uh, to the spinal cord via, and through the interneurons, we then get a stronger stimulus going to the muscle from the alpha motor neuron and would get a stronger contraction. Okay, so that's one way in which we can actually uh, utilize the muscle spindle mechanism to try and increase the, um, the, the contraction. And, and one way we actually uh, can, can do it in terms of a training perspective is when you do plyometric training, you're stretching and shortening the muscle in a very short amount of time. So you're training the muscle to, to stretch, to shorten, stretch, to shorten, and over time the spindles will, get, will, will, will stretch and you'll be able to perform stronger contractions, stronger, more powerful contractions. So essentially what we've got here is uh, something which is sensing the stretch of the, the, uh, the muscle, and in any given situation, so for example, if I've got my arm held 90 degrees, and somebody puts a dumbbell into my arm, then what, what's actually going to happen is that my arm is going to uh, drop a little bit because my muscle is going to lengthen, it's going to stretch, and so a signal is sent from the afferent nerve to the efferent nerve, which is the alpha motor neuron, and I get a contraction. And now if I can have a greater stretch, I'll have a greater contraction. Okay, so that's the principle of the muscle spindle. Uh, and of course, from a, a proprioceptive um, uh, position, it's detecting the stretch and it's detecting the joint position or the joint angle, okay, because that's related to uh, the degree of stretch within the muscle.